Hi uh, YouTube, this is Patrick, and this is my review of Walking Dead Season 2's finale. Um, really good episode, it was pretty much uh, summed up what's been going on with the last four episodes of this season, um, where I think a lot of people have been watching it, including me, even feeling better about the show, um, and more importantly, they're, more importantly, they're feeling, feeling better about the show moving forward. Um... And that's the point I'll be getting to toward the end of this, but uh, as far as the actual episode goes, this episode was very similar to one they did a couple of weeks ago, I think it was the second one back, um, where the first half of the episode was different than the second. The first half was very action-oriented, the second half was very dialogue-heavy. A couple of weeks ago, the episode they did, I was pissed off about it because um, the action-heavy part at the beginning of the episode, this is one a couple of weeks ago, uh, is when Rick and... Herschel and, um, and Glenn were in the bar, they had the shootout, and they had to pull Randall out of there. First half of that episode was fantastic. Not just because it was action, it was just well done. Second half was all dialogue, and it was boring. Boring. Um, and just not well, well executed, just not well done. This episode had the exact same structure, but I liked this one. Now, the first half... Was, was excellent, just really like tension filled, really felt like a season finale. Um, tons of action. I mean, it, it was a pure season finale. When I looked down at the um, at the clock, I thought the episode was at like 9 um, like 30 I thought it was going to say it was like 9.37 already or something because so much had happened it must already be almost two thirds over. And it was like 9.17. We haven't gotten halfway through yet. Um, I love it when you watch an episode of television and you look down and you see that. That that's always uh, that's always a good indicator that you know it's pretty good. The second half that was more dialogue driven. I liked it because it was basically a setup for season three, and the setup made me excited for season three. So the, it did its job. Plus, it you know it gave us you know pretty good uh, places to leave our characters as far as cliffhangers go and you know how they're dealing with one another. Um, there were still some problems, but, you know. Um, Alright, so the first half of the episode, they're all barn, you know, the the, uh, the farm basically goes up. We see the helicopter sort of... I don't know if if, it, if we're supposed to take that the, heli the zombies are following just the helicopter noise the entire way, or what. There's something going on with the helicopter, because we've seen it twice now. Um, and it shows like this, that doesn't just happen, so... But that's probably for a later time, but still. Um, the zombies, you know, head to the farm. We saw them break through. We saw up to the point where the episode then begins. Uh, after the teaser with Rick and Carl uh, walking away from Shane's death. Um, this whole section, it was just all pure action. Everyone just leaving the farm. I thought for sure we were gonna use, we were going to lose Herschel or maybe Carol at the way things were going, or even Andrea. Um, we did lose a couple of minor characters, um, which were fine, they didn't do anything, and maybe, you know, you could look at them as two of the mistakes from this season, and at least they're two mistakes that won't be traveling with us next year. Uh, the one idiot in the RV, I don't know what that guy was doing. Um, uh, and the other woman, the other one actually kind of gave me, like, not a jump, but was really sad, it was something that supposed, you're supposed to feel that way when someone dies on, on this show, even, like, as a minor character. Really brutal, really well done. Uh, I think her name was... I don't, not... No, not Beth. What the hell is her name? I don't know. But whatever. Um, Otis's wife. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so that one was pretty brutal. And that was pretty much the only deaths I think we got. And then pretty much everyone went off on their separate ways uh, before regrouping again. Um, I thought Carol was going to go. Um, but uh, Daryl came back and... Uh, and rescued Arno's bike. Um, I still don't like the fact that he's on a bike. That's just not the vehicle of choice. I don't know. But, um... So he got out. Lori got T-Dog to bring them back. Um... And... Thankfully, I loved it when Herschel was saved. I like Herschel. I like this... I want to see where they go with Herschel. Um... And I like that, you know, Maggie, like, still has her father, and the, the two daughters are still together. They're still, like, a little family unit. Um, because there's, there's still something there. Herschel, you know, is, a, like, a man of faith, and he said that line 
this episode that ended up being probably too funny for its own good about, you know, Jesus saying, you know, the dead were going to rise. He goes, I thought it would be something different. Or whatever the line was. It was inten it was unintentionally funny, but still, I like Herschel. I'm glad he's sticking around. Um, Andrea ran through the woods and it looked like she was done and she was saved by a woman with a samurai sword with two um, zombies attached to her by chains. They were both armless. Uh, it looked like it was straight out of a comic book, like the frame where she showed up, and it was because of the comic book. Um, and I, I forget, I don't know the character's name, her name begins with, her name begins with an M. They already cast her. Uh, she was play, being played by, I don't know the actress's name. She was on Treme. Um, but uh, apparently she's awesome, according to the comic book people. I don't know why, but we'll find out next year. So that's a plus for next year. Um, so we see where that goes with Andrea, and if she's going to meet up with our group somehow. Um... Then we get to the biggest thing that annoyed me this episode, which was Lori. Lori took over for Carl. Um, and pushing Rick to get rid of Shane for, what, half a season? And uh, he does. And uh, even though this was done in one shot where Rick is telling her the story, he's, you know, he's in the foreground, she's in the background, and she could just tell her just, like, slowly getting more and more angry and pissed and just, you know, aghast by what he's telling her. And then her kind of breaking on finding out that Carl shot him. I understand why she was upset by that. Like, that Carl had to do it. But, she, like, backs away from Rick, and it's like, do you, you do recall what you said. And you do recall you did go talk to Shane, which I originally thought was a nice little scene. Apparently she was pushing Shane. I missed out on that. Um, but yeah. So, uh, Lori, I mean, I don't know what those writers were doing during that. I don't I don't like that at all. Um, I saw an interview with an actress. She goes, I hope the two characters can find each other, you know, find their way back to each other. Uh, her and Rick. Rick should not have anything to apologize for. For, you know, killing Shane like that. Shane had to go. He had to. Um, and, you know, it was lucky Carl was there. So... I don't know. Whatever. Lori sucks. Uh, that's the point, I guess. Um, it's been annoying for a while. She's another one of the problems of this season. But she's going to stick around. So we'll hope that that particular character, along with Carl, get better next year. Um, what was awesome... Oh, also, and Carol yelling at Rick, uh, do something or whatever, you know, like, shut up. What do you... What do, you like, do you do something? Um... I like Daryl standing up for Rick. That was cool. Herschel also. Um, you know, as much as Rick seemed like a bit of an asshole at the end, he was right. He's like, look, there's the door. Go see if you can do better. Otherwise, you know, it was kind of, again, like watching Lost and seeing how the, the main character Jack on that show, everyone hated him, but everyone looked to him. So it's the same thing here. Um, I like where they're going with him. I like he's become almost like a new Shane. Um, just not as crazy. Not yet, anyway. Um, him revealing to everyone that what Jenner told him in the last year's finale. That was cool. Um, and I like the excuse of him saying I didn't tell anyone because I thought he was nuts. Um, I guess that makes sense. I'll buy that. That's okay. But, uh, this is getting long-winded anyway. Uh, yeah, so the episode ended with a big shot of the prison, which from the comic books, again, I haven't read them, but I know the prison is awful. It's a great storyline. Um, next year's season is 16 episodes. I assume we're going to be staying there for 16 episodes. The writers on the show have basically said that they've heard the fans and they've listened to the idea. We only we we don't only need an overall season arc, but we need every individual episode to be kind of packed with you know with good stuff. I hope that they do that. I read this on Entertainment Weekly. I hope that they do it. If they do that, we're gonna have a great show. Because um, this can be a really, really, really good show when it's packed with interesting things. When it's just an episode where they just kind of are, like I've said this before, when they're just meandering around, is boring. So, I mean, so what do you do? So it means you don't have an episode where you're just meandering around. Not that difficult. Um, yeah, so as far as moving forward, um, I'm looking forward to it. Um, you know, 
the this whole season when the farm was being destroyed, I actually felt a little bit bad. Um, and I was impressed that I felt a little bit bad. I know a lot of people were probably looking at it as like, yeah, they're finally leaving the farm, and the show is probably wanting you to go, no, we're leaving the farm. Um, I was a little sad to just watch it burn more than anything. Uh, but it was nicely filmed, I guess. But, um... Yeah, so this season was a bit of a mixed bag. I'm going to put it down at a B-, uh, because of the last four episodes. I felt great about the first three episodes this year. Um, and then it just went into, like, a... It was just spinning its wheels. And then the Sophia storyline came to an ending, which was well done. And then it started spinning its wheels again, and then we had these last four that were well done. Um... If I told you, like, how this season goes, you know, they're going to start where they have to get to this farm, it's going to be a great, you know, action-packed season premiere, uh, Carl's going to get shot, so they have to go to the school to, to get supplies, but Shane's going to have to kill this guy, and Shane's going to go nuts, meanwhile Sophia's going to go missing, and we find out halfway through, Sophia's going to be a zombie, uh, and then they find this guy, Randall, and they don't know if he's part of the group, and they decide to execute, and blah, 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 Dale, Shane, dies, everything, all that. Sounds fantastic. Sounds like action-packed stuff. Um, just sounds well done when you say it like that. Maybe not the way I said it. I probably sounded like a mess, but you know what I mean. Instead, this season, a lot of people were pissed off, uh, including me. Um, but I will say the best thing about it is that it ended well, and it gives me hope for the future of this show. Um... And, uh, yeah, so I'm looking forward to it. So I guess that wraps this up. Um, you know... Oh, one more thing. The idea that Frank Darabont wanted one episode a season where it was just a standalone, a random person, how they were going about their lives and how they became into a zombie, basically, I so wouldn't mind that. In fact, you could do that to, to elongate an entire season. So instead of having a, a shitty filler episode at a farm, at the farm this year that we had, like one of the ones we did, how about an episode like that? Or at least it's a, f a good hour of television. Which isn't that the point. Uh, but instead, AMC wouldn't let him do that. So AMC, fuck you. Uh, Darabont is the reason that the first half of the show is slow. And when AMC said, hey, this first half is really slow, why don't you pick up the pace? He was like, oh, blah, 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 I don't feel like it. Or I'm gonna let me do it my way. So Darabont, fuck you. So instead of these two sides coming together and working it out, they both, you know, act like children, and we got, you know, we got shit on for most of the season. That's what it felt like. Um, the audience suffered. But it picked up toward the end, and next year we'll have a clear showrunner and a clear, hopefully, story from beginning to end. And, yeah, that's it. I'm looking forward to it. All right, let me know what you thought. Um, I'm going to be working on, uh, working. I'll be reviewing Game of Thrones when it comes back uh, in two weeks. So, um... I'll put some other stuff on here, but until then, see you guys.